ओके बिकॉज ऑफ द टाइम कॉन्स्टेंट्स आई डिंट गो इन टू टू मेनी डिटेल्स परपजफुली फर्स्ट इन फॉरमोस्ट देर आर मैनी मैनी केसेस इन primarily the developed countries several of europe couple in us and in australia where rivers are being rejuvenated taken backwards certainly with investment of billions of dollars not just millions but i would still say that we should use those uh, experiences or studies only at the conceptual level no more than that because none of the indian rivers have any comparison whatsoever with any other river in the world if there is a comparison of some extent it is within the himalayan rivers if i take mekong number 1 it flows straight south there is a mekong commission where uh, seven countries can come together discuss it together make some plans india refuses to make a international commission they don't want the multi party agreement and discuss it i had a bitter experience way back in 76 where i was going to be more or less in the emergency days hounded for my view that there should be a river basin approach the word river basin approach that is now being talked about was specifically told to me on my face in delhi by the joint secretary in the foreign affairs is not the word liked by the indian government don't use it and i was short of denied to travel outside india for that reason but i could manage somehow <coughs> that's a different stories number to we get the himalayan rivers influenced by monsoon and the snow melt both and highly season other rivers are not having that combination the nearest monsoonal climate and seasonality is in the murray darling but no snow flow no snow melt at all no mountain to back up if you take nile it originates somewhere in south travels vertically north through the entire length through forests and uninhabited areas and so on and nothing lastly through the desert they have their own plan what they have done to danube what they have done to rhine you know very often they say it should be done to rhine or uh, rhone or something experience or muse uh, experience and our problem is entirely because we started following thames model right from day one in ganga action plan we cannot come out of the british slavery mentality we remain british in our thinking in our actions forgetting what the theme says where does it originate where does it flow only looking at the pollution or domestic pollution what was there along ganga kanpur's industries and tanneries existed way back in 85 also they thought that the pollution control act will take care of all the industries which they have not taken care till today even today the tanneries and chromium remain the most important problem in ganga and they have not been able to tackle the sewage pollution because of the flow characteristics the basin characteristics its alluvial characteristic it thames is not an alluvial river which river we are talking about in mississippi missouri nothing not the least they have a 100 uh, year flood zoning in along mississippi where from economic view point 
it is the insurance policy. If you construct it within the 100 year floodplain zone, you have to pay a very high premium and it is your responsibility. Here, we want to build without any liability, without any responsibility right into the river bed. Why? We cannot follow the examples. Danube has been rejuvenated by removing embankments. The countries along the Danube agreed that they will allow the area to be flooded again. But here you cannot uh, think of uh, even abandoning the program for one of the terms. So if we cannot, it is the politician, I differ a little bit, there are two groups of scientists today I can say, one who always look for favors from the government, from the powers that be there and they will talk the language which suits their masters and most of the scientists are afraid of talking pure science today. And that is what Manoji has been saying, how did Niri change its stand whether uh, the area under uh, Commonwealth game is a part of the floodplain or not a floodplain. In one report they say it is a floodplain, in the next say it is not a floodplain. It is changing stand. That is a very clear example today and that has been going on everywhere. The second thing, the politicians are concerned only in economics. Today the entire government is run by economists. This look into money and money is a short term gain. You make as much money as possible in five years, who is uh, to bother you after 50 years? No one is going to blame today, you can say whether the policies uh, after independence were right or wrong, whether a dam should have been or not, it was the temple. Today we are talking that the dam should not be there. So those politicians, it is the economic policies. And they are driven by how much money is coming. When in Himachal Pradesh the whole issue was, we did not discuss. I simply said an environmental economics has to be worked out. That was not my mandate. If you look at how much is the economic loss by not having a power supply or not using the entire amount of water, if the water uh, supply to the hydropower is reduced by 50%, what will be the loss to the state, to the people, to the company and how much will be the gain downstream or upstream? They say run of the river and create 135 meters of a dam. Is that a, not dam? And they say no, it is still a run of the river. The same Chamera 2 had to be redesigned twice because the tunnels got damaged. Landslides occurred, the whole tunnel fell down, they had to raise the elevation. The cost is not, the state is interested in 12% of the free power supply. That's it. Who gets that power, not the poor? If the politician is interested in supporting the poor, the downtrader, the lowest rung of the society, then they should allow this power to be used there. But they are selling it and all the power. The economics is, as I was uh, told in Himachal, during the winter you need electricity, more electricity, but you don't generate because there is no water. What you do? You buy electricity from outside, all the power generate. And in the summer, when you don't need, you generate more and sell it off because uh, people in the plane need more. So it is just a bartering of uh, power in the resources, not looking at all the damages. And one last thing I would say, the same, and it is most important in Indian context, and recently when the issue of uh, Brahmaputra and the dam or diversion in, by China in Brahmaputra came up, no, I think I shared that only with the Manojji that uh, 
the Indian government has no moral authority to stop China from making a dam on Brahmaputra. If it were so, the Himachal should not create a dam or Uttarakhand should not create a dam because uh, UP, Bihar, West Bengal are also affected. Why we should create uh, dams on the Nepal border? If Nepal objects, it is a bilateral issue. I don't want to go into politics, but that is what is affecting because this science is not being considered by the policy maker at all. The decision makers, they may be aware of all the so called bureaucrats do understand. In all my interactions, most of them, yes, it is true. But their political masters don't want to listen to. Even if you advise them, they will not. Give, let me give one example. I made a plan for rehabilitation of the catchment of tons. There was an entire workshop chaired by the chief secretary of Uttarakhand with the forest department and other departments present there, NGOs, several academicians, everyone was there discussing and then they approved that yes, these are the activities to be taken up. This MOEF has been writing now letters that we need a proposal and a commitment for certain share of funding. Uttarakhand is just sleeping. They don't want any rehabilitation because they have already plans for uh, half a dozen power uh, in, inside the century. Now, there is another conflict. The Tons Upper Watershed is declared as Govind National Park. Long way. It was approved by the MOEF. The state government had problems. The forest department had problems. They did boundaries again. Oh, the whole thing was mapped again. I have the maps from the forest department that these areas be excluded and the rest be cleared. The central government has said, no, we cannot change the boundaries of the national park now. We don't want to exclude any area. Neither the areas have been excluded, nor the boundaries have been changed, nor the state government is giving effect to the national park. If it is a national park, not one of the power projects can come up there. They cannot be initiated. So for the state government, there's not a problem. So there are a lot of those ramifications. We have to think of our own situations. Many people have to sit together and talk the real science as it works. Science is truth. It is the same in US or Europe or Australia or Africa. It doesn't change. But Brichko Balji, this kind of natural science is not considered pursuit of science by the science managers of this country. There are science managers who don't think the pursuit of this natural science is not considered as science. But we are working in that kind of environment. Uh, let, me, let me just uh, two things responding to her question. I mean, for the feeling about the person who gave his life for Yamuna, it was a very good note. But, sir, with everyone sitting here, I would beg to say that we do not agree with anything that has happened here today or said. Everybody has this same very philosophy which the world has, that there are rats in the house, and you control the rats with the cat, to control the cat, you go for the dog, and to control the dog, you go for the wolf. To control the wolf, you go for the tiger. Tiger will eat you up. This is all that we are trying to say. Please do not take it personal, but we feel really sad that we came all the way from Himachal to understand this conference, and I do not have any message for myself or anybody else. We are the only people to be taken 
uh, and blamed for. Government cannot do anything. There is no government in the world. There is no leader in the world. Had we any leadership in the world, we would not be in this chaos today. And please, sir, you all understand that we do not have much time. The, the situation is much more serious than we understand. We, <clears throat> my name is Narendra Kumar Obhan. My wife is Neera. We are having an organization called This Earth is Mine. This is not an NGO. We don't accept money from anybody. Some retired officers, scientists, and literary people from uh, our old college days. We run this group called This Earth is Mine. Ye dharti meri hai. Sir, I just uh, have a one simple suggestion that having gone through all these two, three hours of debate, can we say that a drop of uh, uh, wisdom has fallen into any good ear? I do not think, sir. You can ask yourself. So what is my suggestion? My suggestion is that for any problem in the world, there are simple, healthy, noble, and daring, satisfying solutions smiling all around us. And one of them is go home and think just for five minutes. Whom are you blaming? It is we who ourselves are to be blamed because our lifestyle is so wretched, so degrading that in fact it cannot be called a lifestyle at all. I tell you our mission uh, has three basic concepts. Number one, the way we produce kachra in the world. No power on earth, no government on earth, no uh, Commercial organization on earth can clean that kachra. Number two, the way we produce crime and give seeds to the crime in every house today by mongering for the comfort. No policeman on earth, no government on earth, no spiritual person on earth can handle that crime. Number three, the way we go for comfort and degrading ourselves, no physician, no doctor, no remedy, no medicine can cure us. Sir, my only suggestion is that today if we go back home and we believe that we have really done something, I have a very, very extraordinarily simple suggestion and we tell everybody the same thing, that if you spend less than 10 minutes per year, the world is going to see a change. And that is that if you all go home and raste mein ek kagaz ka kachre ka tukda utha ke usko side mein dal dijiye, the effort would have begun. The, the bigger the person, the nobler the person, the higher the authority, if you pick up one person, sir, Mr. Iyer, it has more value than I pick it up. And when the people see you that you are picking up one piece of kachra from the roadside and put it properly somewhere, it will have effect not only on everybody else, but even on you and your family. So we just end with this. Thank you very much. Let me reassure you that if you think that people here will disagree with you, they do not. A very large number of people will say exactly the same thing. Fundamentally today, this is the problem. I do, see, it is implied in what Professor Bridge Gopal said. Many of the things we do, we do because we are pursuing a particular kind of development. That development is all wrong. You cannot pursue 8% growth, 10% growth and not cause these problems. These problems are inevitable. Unless you abandon... But you see, the difficulty, the difficulty is that if you merely say that, nobody is going to act on it. We are living in a world where we have, we have reached a certain stage. Maybe these mistakes were made in the past, but we have, now we can't go back and rewrite the past. We are pursuing a certain style of development, which inevitably causes these consequences. But what we can do is two things. One is talk to people, try and change people's minds, tell everyone that this way of life is totally unsustainable. At the same time, in the short term, do what we can to reduce the impact of this in the next day, the next two days, next three days. So both short-term and long-term views are required. So, but there is no disagreement with what you Thank said. Thank you very much, sir. Please do not I imagine. Want to begin with this very room. Yours, see, how much are we adding to global no, warming by so many all these? Yours is not. Yours is not. A, and all that. Is this not global warming? Are we no, not yours. Warming? Yours is not a solitary voice. I don't want to sound egotistical, but if you please, when you can, find time. There is a book by me called Towards Water Wisdom. Take a look at it and you will see many of the things that you say are there in it. But coming, <coughs> may I say a few things in response to other people? We have to wind up now. Uh, one is about, you know, the, the language that we use is very misleading. If you, if you question some of these projects, you know, the impact of hydropower, the impact of projects and so on you immediately somebody will tell you but we need power 
and hydroelectric power is the least polluting. That, that's a misleading statement. But this is the kind of argument that you will hear. And they will tell you that in the Himalayas, in the rivers, there is a hydropower potential of 80,000 megawatts, of which 48,000 can be economically exploited. This hydropower potential is one of the most misleading statements. <coughs> Sorry. There is no hydropower potential in a running river. You cannot generate power on, on, by putting a, a power plant in the river. You have to raise the head of water and drop it down penstocks, for which you need a dam. So what is creating the hydropower potential is not the river but the dam. So when you say there is 80,000 megawatts of hydropower potential in the rivers, what you mean is there are technical possibilities of putting up so many dams in the Himalayan rivers. This translation is very important. We mislead ourselves. Then secondly, you say, oh, you know, there is no storage. These are run of the river projects, implying that run of the river projects are harmless. They are not. A run of the river project requires a big dam. We, don't, we are not generating power as the river runs. We are putting up a, some of the, you know, this Baglihar project, which was in dispute between India and Pakistan, has a dam which is bigger than the Narmada dam. So this is a very misleading statement. And we say run of the river, you know, you, the river water goes back to the turbines. It doesn't. You divert it at this point, you're putting it back to the river at this point, creating a dry patch in between. And if you have a cascading series of hydropower plants, you have a cascading series of dry patches. You should see a PowerPoint presentation on this by Ravi Chopra of the People Science Institute, Deradu. So these are some of the languages that you should know. Then secondly, we, we, we talk about minimum flow. It's a very dangerous language. Minimum flow implies maximum abstraction. What it means is, so long as you leave this little bit of water in the river, you can take away the rest of it. So they came up with another word, ecological flow. But all the flows in the river are ecological flows. There is not a single drop in the river which is not ecological. So what, at the same time, one cannot say, do not interfere at all. All that one can say is minimum interference. So what you need is not minimum flows, but minimum interference. But these are, I mean, I have been saying this for a long time, but uh, people don't listen. Then uh, you talked about basins. Apart from what Professor Brisgopal said, see, there are some kinds of organizations, commissions, authorities, and so on, on rivers in many countries, Europe, Mekong, and between America and Mexico, America and Canada, and so on. Unfortunately, there's a very strong resistance to that idea in this country. Not only between countries. It is not only that we adopt bilateralism as a firm policy between India, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, India, Nepal. We will never talk to all of them together. Internally, no state will allow you to set up a river basin authority. He mentioned entry 56 in the union list, which empowers the central government to deal with interstate rivers. But provided parliament passes a law, parliament has not passed a law, except one law, which is the Riverboards Act. That act is a dead letter. No, not a single riverboard has been set up under that act. Why? Political difficulties. No state will let you. So these are, there is strong, you know, when the Krishna tribunal gave an award, first, I'm talking about the first Krishna tribunal, not the second one. It had two parts to its report, A and B. A allocated the available flows on the 75% dependability basis. B talked about surplus flows and so on, and B envisaged a Krishna River Basin Authority. <coughs> Could not be implemented because all the states opposed it, so the tribunal itself <coughs> said, recommended only scheme A to be operated. Scheme B is not operative. Of course, now there's a second tribunal we'll have to deal with that. So there is this kind, and similarly, Kaveri. At one stage, central government wanted to establish a Kaveri River Basin Authority, and they circulated a draft. There was very strong opposition from Karnataka. So they dropped the idea of a professional expert body. Instead, they set up a political body called Kaveri River Authority with prime minister as the chairman, chief ministers as members, and so on, which can't do anything except troubleshooting when the trouble occurs. So there is very strong resistance to this idea. Both Nepal and Bangladesh have been arguing with India 
saying, look, this entire Ganga, Brahmaputra, Meghna basin is one huge common basin. And we should have joint understandings. All the countries, including China, should be part of some kind of regional understanding. But government of India has been very strongly resisting. Of course, things are changing now. <coughs> but in the year 1990, 91, when we formulated a scheme, Center for Policy Research wanted to undertake a three-country study with corresponding academic institutions in Kathmandu and in Dhaka. Ford Foundation was willing to give some money for it. Under FERA, we needed the government approval for accepting this money. And the government refused permission because of all people, not the Water Resources Ministry, not the External Affairs Ministry, but the Intelligence Bureau of the Home Ministry said this is highly politically subversive, getting both Nepal and Bangladesh together and talking. <laughs> so we had to find some other way of uh, financing the study. And so this is the, fortunately things are changing a bit through force of circumstance. And uh, now we are finding ourselves apparently threatened by Chinese plans of diversion. So now today we are in the position of a lower riparian. All these days Pakistan has been talking to us expressing concern about what we are doing to the western rivers of the Indus system. Now we are in a similar situation vis-a-vis -vis China accepting that Pakistan is the protection of a treaty. We don't. We don't have a treaty with China on the rivers. And we want to make common cause with Bangladesh, go to China and say, please take our concerns into account. So Bangladeshis would tell you, what China is doing to us is what you did to us earlier. So why should we come with you? Absolutely. So, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. Uh, <coughs> these are some of the difficulties. But I think that kind of very, I know, one consequence of this has been that all river flow data are classified as confidential. No academic can study the flows of the Ganga because you won't get information from the government of India. They won't get permission. Even government established commissions and committees, there is a committee established under the chairmanship of Professor Hanuman Rao, I was also a member of the committee, to examine the environmental and resettlement rehabilitation aspects of the theory project. We couldn't get any information from, it was very difficult for us to get information from the government for the purpose of our study. But you can get all that information from NASA in Washington. Anybody who writes a book, let us say on the Indo-Bangladesh dispute, will get all the material he needs from Bangladesh, not from us. It's extremely difficult for us to write books on these subjects because we don't get the data. All the, what can one do? One has been fighting these battles for a long time. It is not that wisdom has gone only after retirement. It is a continuing process. Education started in government. We try to do what we can within government. We are a bit more free now to speak. That's the only difference. And uh, one, one, one more point about uh, what Mr. Rangatari said. You were talking about Yamuna, Riverbed, and so on. Banoj and myself, and we were all involved in attempts to get the Commonwealth Games village shifted away from this Yamuna River bed or floodplain or whatever it is. We failed. There was a court, uh, there was a case in the Delhi High Court and the Delhi High Court, after a long period of hearing, they were also a little worried about the political implications of this, but they were willing to say that this should be studied by an expert committee. It went to the, the government went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court put aside the order of the Delhi High Court. I could have understood if the Supreme Court had said, look, let us be practical. The games are around the corner. It's too late now to shift the venue. On practical grounds, we can't do anything about it. They didn't say that. They said this is not the riverbed, depending on the Neri report. The Supreme Court went on record in its judgment saying this is not the riverbed. Now, what can you do when even the judiciary conspires with the executive in this fashion. So this is, this is one thing which I thought I would share with you. So these are some of the footnotes that I wanted to write to what other people have we already. We are 10 minutes over time. Sorry, you wanted to say something, but there's not much time. Just, 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 just one minute, please. Uh, you had asked uh, about some suggestion. 
regarding this whole thing about, uh, I think like they say, iron cuts iron. Now everybody is after money. It's only money that will actually control money. How? Let me give you an example. Uh, there is now a, a very interesting concept which is coming up, payment for ecological services. That people who actually uh, protect, preserve for, for uh, others to benefit, they should be compensated, they should be paid and in perpetuity. Now just like with the new mining bill, where they have said 26% of the profits have to be invested in that area. Similarly, I, I, I showed you that slide where uh, the Koti Dam, Ichari Dam, there is a tunnel which comes and about 30 kilometer of the river is actually made dry. Now there are villages there, there are people living there. Now they have been deprived of the ecological services of the river. Now this project should be mandated to make payment for deprivation of ecological services to those people in perpetuity. Now, when such things, such models actually come up, then a lot of these projects will become non-viable. It is just that EST says, okay, one-time payment, and there should never be a compensation as a one-point payment. It should always be in perpetuity. Thank you.